What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript challenge video. And in this video, we'll check whether the sum of numbers is even or odd. And before we begin, let me just mention that since I've been getting a bunch of great inputs, I have started adding them to the source code. So if you follow the source code link located in the description, you might find some other nifty solutions as well. And the idea is following where we want to come up with a function that takes in some type of number, whether that's 56 or 745, and of course, any other number. And then we split it up into separate numbers, in this case, five and six. And then we just check the sum. And if the sum is odd, then of course, we return odd. And then if the sum is even, and of course, we return a string with a value of even. And if you want to check in JavaScript, whether some number is odd or even a very common solution is following where you just take the number in this case, 11, and then you use the modules operator. And the way it works, since modules operator returns a remainder, if you go with a number and then modules and then two, if there's some type of remainder, then of course, the number is odd. So we're talking about this 11. And if that value is actually zero, then of course, we know that the number is even. And I'm going to start by coming up with some kind of function. And I think I'm going to call this sum. So const sum is equal. And we know that we'll pass in the number. And for time being, we'll just return hello there. And then of course, I also want to console log. And then I'll say sum. And I'll pass in the 56. And of course, since I'm returning hello there, that's what we should see in a console. And we need to start by actually splitting this number into those separate numbers. And in order to do that, we need to turn this number into a string. And essentially, we have two options, we can either go with two string method, or there's also a somewhat unorthodox setup, where we just add a empty string. And if we do that, then number will be turned into a string. So let's start over here where we just want to get the array of all the numbers that are in this number. And we do that by setting up some kind of array. In my case, I'm going to call this items. And I want to go with spread operator, because that's how we can split up a string into separate values. So we go here with dot dot dot, but then before we do anything, of course, we need to turn that number into a string. So we go here with a number, and then plus, and then of course, I'm just adding that empty string. So if I go back and console log, and if I look for items, now, of course, I have five and six. And once we're done with that, again, we're going to go with our reduce method. And for starters, I'll set this up as a variable and return that variable. But of course, you can guess that eventually we'll shorten this up. So let's go here with items, and then reduce. And again, we need to pass in the callback function, and some kind of initial value. And of course, in our case, that initial value is going to be zero. And then in the callback function, two arguments, one is the total, effectively what we're going to be returning. And the second one is that individual item. And in here, the logic is following where I just want to go with a return total. So whatever is my total, plus, but then remember that these are strings. So now we need to turn them back into the number. And effectively, we have these options, either we can go with parse int, which is going to turn this into integer, then parse float for decimals, or we can go with number which returns not a number, if of course, whatever we're passing is not a number. And I think I'm going to go with number option. And then I'm just going to go with number and then pass back the item. Now, of course, since I'm not returning anything from the function now I have undefined, but we'll simply fix that by going back. And then if we console log and take a look at the result, of course, now our result is going to be 11. And now we simply want to check with that modules operator, what is the remainder. And if of course, we have zero, then we know that it is even. And in order to make it short and concise, I think I'm going to use the ternary operator. So let's go with a result of then modulus. And of course, I'm looking for two, then if it is equal to zero, then I, of course, I know that my number is even. And if not, 
then we return odd. And now we want to simply test this with a second value as well. And in here, I'll pass in 745. And of course, the number is even. And if we want to shorten this up, let's comment this out first. And then let's set up another sum. So const sum. And again, we'll pass in the number. Again, since we're using arrow function, we have the implicit return. And then let's just go with our array right away. So I'll be splitting up that string into single values. And then, of course, before I can do that, I need to go with a number and then turn it into the string. And in this case, I'll use the two string method. Then we want to chain right away a reduce. And in here, we'll just go with callback function total and then item. And by default, we'll return a zero, of course. So that's going to be our starting point. And then as far as the logic, actually, I'll remove those curlies because again, we have implicit return and we just go with total plus number and we'll pass in that item. Now, of course, we can see 16. And then lastly, we want to chain the modulus operator as well. So in here, let's add modulus to is equal to zero. If that is the case, then of course, the same logic where we go with even and colon. And then of course, we pass in the odd. So that's how we can check whether the sum of individual numbers is even or odd.